Welcome to an introduction to mechanical vibrations and related applications. Suppose that we have a mass m greater than zero connected to a spring attached to a wall with spring constant k greater than zero. There may also be some external force, big F of t, acting on the mass. Finally, there is some friction measured by c greater than or equal to zero as the mass slides along the floor or perhaps a damper is connected. We let x be the displacement of the mass, where x equals zero is the rest position, with x growing to the right, meaning away from the wall. The force exerted by the spring is proportional to the compression of the spring by Hooke's law, indicating the force of the spring, big F sub s, is equal to negative k times x. It's negative because the force is in the opposite direction of the force of the mass. Similarly, the amount of force exerted by friction is proportional to the velocity of the mass, indicating the force of the friction, big F sub F, is equal to negative C times X prime, where X prime represents the velocity. And again, notice how it's negative because it'll be in the opposite direction the mass is moving. By Newton's second law, we know that force equals mass times acceleration, meaning the force of the mass is equal to M times X double prime, where X double prime is the acceleration. Therefore, we can model the motion of the mass using the differential equation. M x double prime equals big F of t minus c times x prime minus k times x. If we set the right side equal to big F of t, we have M x double prime plus c x prime plus k x equals big F of t, which is a linear second order constant coefficient ordinary differential equation. And if big F of t is a zero function, the equation is homogeneous. The motion modeled by the differential equation is forced if big F is not identically zero, meaning it's not always the zero function. The motion is unforced or free if big F is identically zero, meaning big F is always the zero function. The motion is damped if C is greater than zero, and the motion is undamped if C equals zero. This system appears in lots of applications, even if it does not at first seem like it. Many real world scenarios can be simplified to a mass on a spring. For example, a bungee jump setup is essentially a mass and spring system where you are the mass. And it would be good if someone did the math before you jump off the bridge. Let's look at two more examples. Here's an example for electrical engineers. Consider the pictured RLC circuit. There is a resistor with a resistance of R ohms, an inductor with an inductance of L Henry's, and a capacitor with a capacitance of C farads. There's also an electrical source, such as a battery, given a voltage of E of T volts at time T measured in seconds. Let Q of T be the charge in coulombs on the capacitor, and I of T be the current in the circuit. The relationship between the two is Q prime equals I. By elementary principles, we have L times I prime plus R times I plus Q divided by C equals E. If we differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to T, we have L times I double prime plus R times I prime plus one divided by C times I of T. This is because remember, Q prime is equal to I, and this is equal to E prime of T. Notice this is a non-homogeneous second order constant coefficient linear equation. As L, R, and C are all positive, this system behaves just like the mass and spring system. Position of the mass is replaced by current, mass is replaced by inductance, damping is replaced by resistance, and the spring constant is replaced by one over the capacitance. The change in voltage becomes the forcing function. For constant voltage, this is an unforced motion. Our next example behaves like a mass and spring system, but only approximately. Suppose a mass M hangs on a pendulum of length L as shown here on the right. We seek an equation for the angle theta of T in radians. Let G be the force of gravity. Elementary physics mandates that the equation is theta double prime plus G divided by L times sine theta equals zero. Let us derive this equation by using Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. The acceleration is L times theta double prime and mass is m. So m times l times theta double prime has to be equal to the tangential component of the force given by the gravity, which is m times g times sine theta in the opposite direction. This indicates that m times l times theta double prime 
equals negative m times g times sine theta. Notice the m simplifies out, and if we divide through by l, we do get theta double prime plus g divided by l sine theta equals zero. And now we make an approximation. For small theta, we have that sine theta is approximately theta. If we take a look at the graph below, we have the graph of sine theta in blue and the graph of theta in green. Notice around x equals zero, or in the open interval from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5, the graphs are almost the same, which is why we can say sine theta is approximately theta for small theta. Therefore, when the swings are small, theta is small, and we can model the behavior by the simpler linear equation shown here on the right. We're simply replacing sine theta with theta. The errors for this approximation build up. So after a long time, the state of the real world system might be substantially different from our solution. Also, we will see that in a mass spring system, the amplitude is independent of the period. This is not true for a pendulum. Nevertheless, for reasonably short periods of time and small swings, the approximation is reasonably good. In real world problems, it is often necessary to make these types of simplifications. We must understand both the mathematics and physics of the situation to see if the simplification is valid in the context of the questions we are trying to answer. I hope you found this introduction helpful. Thank you for watching.